Saint Werburg was a Benedictine and patroness of Chester, abbess of Weedon, Trentham, Hanbury, minister in Sheppey, and Eli. She was born in Staffordshire early in the 7th century and died at Trentham on the 3rd of February in 699 or 700. Saint Werburg was the king's daughter, a real princess, and very beautiful. But unlike most princesses of the fairy tales, she cared nothing at all about princes or pretty clothes or jewels or about having a good time. Her only longing was to do good and to make other people happy and to grow good and wise herself so that she could do this all the better. So she studied and studied, worked and worked, and she became a holy woman, an abbess. And while she was still very young and beautiful, she was given charge of a whole convent of nuns and schoolgirls, not much younger than herself, because she was so much wiser and better than anyone else in all the countryside. But though Werberg had grown so famous and so powerful, she still remained a simple, sweet girl. All the country people loved her, for she was always eager to help them, to cure the little sick children, and to advise their fathers and mothers. She never failed to answer the questions which puzzled them, and so she set their poor, troubled minds at ease. She was so wise that she knew how to make people do what she knew to be right, even when they wanted to do wrong. And not only human folk, but animals felt the power of this young saint, for she loved and was kind to them also. She studied about them, and grew to know their queer habits and their animal way of thinking. And she learned their language too. Now, when one loves a little creature very much and understands it well, one can almost always make it do what one wishes. That is, if one wishes right. Werberg attended church services every day read the Psalter while kneeling for hours and shedding tears. She often stayed in the church long after matins, even till the afternoon, praying on her knees. Sorry for interrupting the video. I am here to deliver a quick message. If you think our channel has given you $5 worth of knowledge, then can you take a moment to make a donation? Please don't skip the video. 99.8% of our viewers simply skip this, or many think they will donate later and forget. If you make a small donation now, then we can keep making good videos like this one. You can choose to support us through Patreon or make a one-time donation through PayPal. The links are given in the description box below. If you are one of our rare donors, we warmly thank you. You have shown the world access to good content matters to you. Thanks again, and God bless. Stories of the life of Werberg in that period abound with examples of her close communication with nature. Her most famous miracle took place when she was at Weedon Beck on one of the Abbey's farms. One day, she was helping sow seeds for crops along with the farmers in an attempt to avert the famine which was ravaging the land. Suddenly, a great flock of wild geese descended and flew down. And they started eating the seeds. Werberg was angered as the food was intended for the poor. She chased the geese and penned them into a sheep pen. Although the geese had wings, 
they did not fly out of the pen, and you might consider that a small miracle in itself. Werberg told the geese that they should be kept there for one night as punishment. But they were God's creatures and wouldn't be harmed and would be released the next day. That evening, one of Werberg's servants, walking past the pen, decided he would like some goose stew. He took one of the geese, killed it, and ate it. When Werberg found out, she gathered what was left of the stew, the bones, and the skin and feathers, and began to pray. The goose was soon restored to life. It joined its fellows, and when they were released from the pen, they never came back to trouble the fields again. And that is the story of Werberg and the Goose. To this day, some local people say that geese do not damage corn in the fields near Wiedenbeck. Shortly before her repose, she visited all her convicts and gave respective instructions. Saint Werberg died in the Lord in Three Kingdoms after many years of tireless and energetic labors for the glory of the Lord as abbess in Mercia. We celebrate her feast day on the 3rd of February every year. Lord, your servant Werberg turned her back on wealth, privilege, and power and entered into a closer union with you. Help me to reject all the false gods of self-interest, affluence, and personal power to serve you and my fellow human beings. Lord, Werberg grew in holiness and became a shining light for your presence and grace. Help me through prayer to grow in your knowledge and love, that I too may shine in the world to your glory. Lord, Werberg was close to you in your creation. Help me to respect and reverence all that you have made and to work in harmony with your creative will. Lord, Werberg became a beacon of hope, of healing, and of renewal to your people who still come to honor her example at her shrine. May I find this day wholeness of mind, body, and spirit, and a new resolution to serve you by bringing your love to others. This I ask in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen.